Yep, what you're seeing on screen is a MiG-29 fighter jet, and yes, it's flying near space. But here's the wild part, it was never meant to go that high. This jet was built for something else entirely. The Soviets wanted a lightweight, rugged, agile fighter, something that could take off from short, rough runways and survive the unforgiving terrain of the USSR. But the very things that made it durable and agile also made it capable of something extraordinary. During flight testing, engineers pushed it harder and discovered that this machine could climb above 70,000 feet into air so thin, so high, that the sky turns black and the curvature of the Earth becomes visible. They built it for war and accidentally created one of the only fighter jets civilians could take to the edge of space. This is the MiG-29 Fulcrum, and to understand how it ended up brushing the stratosphere, we need to go back to where it all began, in the shadow of the Cold War. It all began in 1969, at the height of the Cold War, when the Soviet general staff issued a bold new requirement – the development of an advanced frontline fighter, a next-generation aircraft that could secure Soviet air superiority well into the 1980s and beyond. The motivation was clear. Intelligence reports have revealed that the United States was working on a pair of cutting-edge air superiority fighters, the McDonnell Douglas F-15 Eagle and a lightweight prototype called the YF-17, which would eventually evolve into the F-A-18 Hornet. These programs were designed to give the US a commanding lead in future air combat. The Soviets could not afford to fall behind. If the Americans succeeded, they would control the skies in any future conflict. So the Soviet response came in the form of an ambitious project, Perspectivny Frontovoy Istrabitl, or literally, the Advanced Frontline Fighter. The specifications were aggressive, a long-range interceptor with Mach 2 Plus capability, heavy armament, short field performance, and extreme maneuverability to counter Western fighters in high-threat environments. But by the early 1970s, Soviet planners realized that one aircraft couldn't do everything. They needed not just one fighter, but a high-low mix, a heavy long-range interceptor to dominate open skies and a smaller, cheaper, more agile aircraft to operate closer to the front lines and in large numbers. So, the PFI program was split. The heavier long-range role was handed to Sukhoi, resulting in the Su-27 flanker. In parallel, the Soviets launched a second program, Perspektivny Lyovkiv Frontovoy Ispretel or the Advanced Lightweight Tactical Fighter. It mirrored the US Air Force's own lightweight fighter program, which gave birth to the F-16 Fighting Falcon. The MiG Design Bureau, already famous for aircraft like the MiG-21 and MiG-25, was assigned the LPFI project. The result was the MiG-29 Fulcrum, a lightweight, agile and lethal dogfighter designed to complement the Su-27 and overwhelm NATO forces in contested airspace. By the time both aircraft entered service in the 1980s, their roles were clearly defined. The Su-27 would conduct deep air superiority missions, long-range sweeps to intercept NATO bombers and fighters before they reached Soviet territory. Meanwhile, the MiG-29 was intended to operate closer to the front lines, launching from shorter, more rugged airstrips, supporting ground forces and engaging enemy aircraft in fast, close-range combat. Together they formed the backbone of Soviet air power a dual-strike doctrine built around synergy, redundancy, and technological ambition. But the fulcrum secret was real. The thing that let it climb so high wasn't in the mission brief. It was hidden in the engineering. So, what exactly allows this fighter jet to climb so high? The answer isn't just one secret trick. It's a combination of engineering choices each designed for a very different purpose, to make the MiG-29 a fast, agile and survivable frontline fighter. Two features stand out above all others – its aerodynamic design and its engines. The MiG-29's wings are not pure deltas, but their shape borrows heavily from delta wing principles. Broad leading edges, sharp sweep angles and blended roots that flow smoothly into the fuselage. This configuration gives the aircraft an excellent lift-to-drag ratio, which is critical for sustained maneuverability at high angles of attack. The twin vertical stabilizers are set far apart, mounted on booms that house the engines. That spacing isn't just for looks. The wide gap between the Klimov RD-33 engines creates a lifting body effect. The airflow between them generates additional lift, reducing wing loading and enhancing agility. 
This also makes the fulcrum more stable and controllable in the thin air above 60,000 feet, where most jets start to lose responsiveness. The second defining element is raw thrust. The MiG-29 is powered by two Klimrov RD-33 afterburning turbofans, each producing 11,200 pounds of thrust dry and 18,300 pounds in afterburner. Together, they give the fulcrum a thrust-to-weight ratio close to, and in some loadouts exceeding, 1 to 1. The result is an exceptional climb rate of over 65,000 feet per minute. These engines were tuned to deliver strong performance across a wide flight envelope, allowing high-altitude operation with less dependence on afterburner than many Western contemporaries. But power and aerodynamics are only part of the story. The fulcrum was also engineered for ruggedness. Built to operate from short, rough, and even improvised runways, it features a clever debris protection system. At low speeds, the main air inlets can close entirely and auxiliary intakes on the upper fuselage open to feed the engines. This not only prevents foreign object damage on unpaved strips, but also helps the aircraft cope with extreme conditions, including the rapid altitude transitions experienced during near-space test flights. Durability extends to the airframe itself, which can withstand extreme G-loads and aggressive maneuvers. The cockpit is fully pressurized, and when paired with a high-altitude pressure suit, it allows pilots to survive and function safely at altitudes far above 60,000 feet. And then there's the way the MiG-29 actually reaches those altitudes. The fulcrum doesn't cruise near the edge of space, it performs what's known as a zoom climb. Soviet test pilots curious about the aircraft's absolute ceiling would accelerate to high subsonic or supersonic speed at a lower altitude, then pitch up into a steep climb. The momentum carried the jet along a ballistic arc, much like a suborbital spacecraft, taking it into the stratosphere, sometimes to altitudes approaching 70,000 feet or more. In that thin, darkened sky, the curvature of the Earth becomes visible. In the end, it was the synergy of design powerful engines, clever aerodynamics, robust systems that gave the MiG-29 this unexpected party trick. What the Soviets built for war would later be used for something they never intended, taking paying civilians to the edge of space. Despite its impressive engineering and fierce reputation, the MiG-29 Fulcrum's combat legacy is a complex one, shaped more by geopolitics than its actual capabilities. During the late Cold War, the Fulcrum was one of the Soviet Union's most advanced fighters, but like many Soviet-era jets, it saw limited large-scale combat under its original operators. Most of its operational use came through export clients, and in most cases, it faced off against better-trained adversaries flying more advanced aircraft, often under unfavorable circumstances. One of its most notable early appearances was during the 1991 Gulf War, where Iraqi MiG-29s engaged US and coalition forces. However, they were quickly outmatched by F-15s and F-A-18s, often due to poor training, outdated radar and missile systems, and limited coordination, not necessarily because of inherent flaws in the MiG-29 itself. In these encounters, Western aircraft had the advantage of AWACS, superior tactics and long-range engagement. The fulcrum was also used by Yugoslavia during the NATO bombing campaign of 1999. Again, MiG-29s were swiftly neutralized, mostly by US F-15s and F-16s. Many of these aircraft were poorly maintained, lacked proper ECM systems, and flew in an environment saturated with NATO air power. Yet these lopsided encounters don't tell the full story. The Soviet Union itself used the MiG-29 during its occupation of Afghanistan in the 1980s. In this more controlled environment, the fulcrum served effectively in an air defense role. One notable event occurred when four Afghan Air Force Su-22s detected and attempted to bomb Kabul. In response, Soviet MiG-29 scrambled and shot down all four intruders within minutes, a swift and brutal reminder of the fulcrum's capabilities when flown under proper command with full support. Today, the MiG-29 remains in service with more than a dozen countries. Nations like India, Poland, Serbia and Ukraine have continued to upgrade and modernize their fleets, extending the aircraft's relevance well into the 21st century. Newer variants like the MiG-29 SMT and MiG-35 feature improved avionics, glass cockpits, in-flight refueling and multi-role capabilities, shifting the fulcrum from a pure dogfighter to a flexible frontline fighter. 
Even more importantly, the MiG-29 has become a symbol, a reminder of the Cold War arms race and the enduring legacy of Soviet airspace engineering. While it never dominated the skies in the way Western jets did, its silhouette, performance and cultural footprint remain unmistakable. The MiG-29 Fulcrum was never supposed to fly to the edge of space. It was a frontline fighter, a tool of war, built for speed, strength and survivability on rugged Soviet runways. But in trying to outmatch the West, the Soviets overbuilt it. And what they ended up creating wasn't just a fighter, it was an engineering anomaly. A machine so powerful, so agile and so resilient that it could punch through the sky and brush against the stratosphere. It wasn't designed for showmanship or altitude records or civilian thrill rides, yet somehow decades later that's exactly what it became – a Cold War weapon turned near space tourist vehicle. The MiG-29 is a reminder that in the pursuit of military dominance, we sometimes unlock capabilities far beyond the battlefield. And occasionally, we build something that does more than we ever intended. Until next time, fly high and stay curious!